Hey guys, this is Mrs. Harbin, and this is Algebra 1, Section 2.8. We are going to continue to work on solving equations. Our biblical integration is this. God allows us to have challenges in life, but he also equips us to face them. Becoming familiar with useful terms is like putting on armor to face algebraic problems. We've been talking a lot about how we need a firm foundation to tackle life's problems, uh, and that's a firm foundation in God's words so we know what's right and what's wrong. But we also need a firm foundation in math so that we can solve these challenging problems with the ultimate goal of going out and using our problem solving skills to help restore and redeem the world. Our lesson objective for today is this. You, the student, will clear equations of fractions and decimals when solving and will apply this procedure when solving real life applications. So we've been working on solving multi-step equations and so far we haven't had to deal with fractions at the beginning. We've had some fraction answers. But what do we do when we have fractions at the very beginning? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. So when we have fractions in an equation, to eliminate the fractions, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common multiple of the denominators. Now hopefully you remember a multiple is uh, not a factor, but the things that you get when you multiply that number. So if we look at the multiples of 3, for example, 3 times 1 is 3, uh, times 2 is 6, times 3 is 9, 12, so forth and so on. These things are called multiples. And the multiples of 4, for example, are 4, 8, 12, 16, so forth and so on. So if I wanted to find a common multiple, uh, I see that both of them have 12 as one of their multiples. In fact, that's the smallest multiple that they have in common or the least common multiple. So we're going to have to use that skill when we're trying to get rid of fractions. We also need to continue to remember that uh, equations are equal, two equal expressions. So whatever we do on one side, we have to do the other. We have to keep things equal, which means we do the same thing to both sides. So let's take a look at solving equations containing fractions. First, we need to find the least common denominator. Then we eliminate fractions by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. Then we solve the resulting equation and check our solution. Here's your first example. Solve x plus x over 4 plus x minus 1 third equals 3. The first thing that we need to do, according to our steps that we just looked at, is find the least common denominator. And we said earlier, when we were listing multiples or reviewing multiples, that the least common multiple or the least common denominator is 12. So we're going to multiply both sides by 12. Imagine that we're putting parentheses here and that we are using the distributive property to multiply everything by 12. So 12 times x plus 4, 12 times positive x, 12 times negative 1 third on this side, and 12 times 3 on the right hand side. We have to do the same thing to both sides. When we multiply everything by 12, we see that our fractions cancel. 12x divided by 4 is just 3x. We've got this 12x. That will just simplify to 12x, no parentheses. And then we have 12 times 1 third. Well, 12 over 3 is just 4. So we're left with 3x plus 12x minus 4 equals 12 times 3, which is 36. Now we're going to follow the same steps as before. We're going to simplify each side of the expression, which gets us to 15x minus 4 equals 36. In order to eliminate this negative 4, we've got to add 4. And if we add 4 to one side, we have to do it to the other. So we get 15x equals 40. In order to get rid of this 15 in front of the x, we want to divide both sides by 15. And that leaves us with x equals 40 over 15. We know that that can be simplified because both of those numbers can be divided by 5. So we get 8 over 3 x equals 8 over 3. Let's try another one. Solve x plus 2 over 6 minus x minus 1 over 3 equals 1 ninth. The first thing that we need to do is find the least common multiple between 3, 6, and 9. The least common multiple is 18. The multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and so on. The multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18 and so on, and the multiples of 9 are 9 and 18. So we can see that all of them have 18 as a multiple. We're going to multiply each side by this least common multiple. Again, imagine that you're doing the distributive property here on both sides of our equation. 
and we're taking 18 times everything on that side and 18 times each term on this side. We get 18 times x plus 2 over 6 equals 18 times x minus 1 over 3 equals 18 times 1 over 9. Our 6 and our 18 will simplify to 3. Our 3 and our 18 simplify to 6, and our 9 and our 18 simplify to 2. Okay, now we have this because we've eliminated our denominators. What we need to do at this point is distribute, combine like terms, and then solve for x. And when we do that, we get x equals 10 over 3. Now, let's try taking some word problems and turning those into equations. The coach has developed a drill that requires a rectangular field with the width being one-third of the length. The perimeter of the field is 280 feet. What length and width should the field line or mark off? Well, whenever we're dealing with word problems, I like to draw pictures first. So, if this is my length, my width is one-third of the length. Of just means multiplied, so one-third L. And I know if I add all of these four sides together, I'm going to get 280 feet. So L plus one-third L plus L plus one-third L plus, you know, you get the idea, equals 280. And we can use that with any variable, X or L or whatever you like. I like to use L because it reminds me what I'm trying to find. X, sometimes I forget what it is I'm trying to find. We know the perimeter is found by adding all sides, so we're going to plug in our numbers there. x plus x plus 1 third x plus 1 third x equals 280. And then we're going to follow the steps that we had before. Let's find the least common multiple or least common denominator. And the LCD is 3, because 3 is a multiple of 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So we're going to multiply everything on both sides by 3. Then that gives us 3x plus 3x plus x plus x equals 840. Combining our like terms and solving for x, and we find out that x equals 105. Now, x was just the length of the field. The width, if you remember, was one-third x, which is 35. Oh, the length of our field is 105 feet. The width is 35. Nice job. Let's take a look at solving equations that contain decimals. In these equations, you can multiply both sides of the equation by a power of 10. Multiplying a decimal by 10 essentially moves that decimal over. So let's take a look at this problem. We have pennies that are worth one cent. We can represent with P, certain number of pennies. Nickels that are five cents. We have an N number of nickels. Dimes are 10 cents. We have D number of dimes. And quarters are 25 cents. And we have Q number of quarters. So the way that we can say their value is... Uh, the value of the pennies is 0.01p. So if we have one penny, we plugged in a one right here for a variable, our value would just be one cent. But if we had a hundred pennies, and so we multiply 0.01 times a hundred, the value of our money would be 1.00, which is one dollar. So we have created that chart, and now let's take a look at this problem. Chris has 17 coins, all dimes and quarters. If he has a total of $2.45, how many of each coin does he have? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we know. We know that he has quarters. We don't know how many, so we'll write Q. And we know that he has a total of 17 coins. So 17 coins minus however many quarters he has will let us know how many dimes he has. We can write the value of the coins, 0.25Q. Value of the quarters is 25 cents times however many quarters he has. And the value of the times is 0 0.10 times however many dimes he has, represented by 17Q. We know that the total value of the coins, if we combine the quarters and the value of the dimes, is $2.45. So we're going to add these two things together to get $2.45. Using the distributive property, we're going to simplify that equation and combine like terms. But first, let's get rid of our decimals. Uh, my biggest decimal goes to the hundredths place, so I'm going to multiply by 100. Again, let's distribute that. I get 25Q plus 10 times 17 minus Q equals 245. 
Now, we did not multiply this by 10. Okay, this is one whole term for the moment, and we're just going to multiply that uh, leading coefficient by 10, not the things that are inside that term. Now we can distribute combine like terms and solve for Q. And you should find that he has 5 quarters. Knowing that, we know how many dimes he has because he had 17 minus quarters. So 17 minus 5 is 12 dimes. When solving word problems, first read the problem. Find the main unknown and assign the variable to it. Then express any other unknowns in terms of it. So our main unknown was quarters, and we expressed everything else using our variable for quarters. We didn't introduce the second variable. Then plan and organize by making a table, indicating the number and the total value of each type of coin or the total value of whatever you're trying to find. Solve an equation obtained by using the information in the value column and any other information from the problem. And that's where we use that $2.45. Check that you've answered all the questions and that your answers are reasonable. If you get that you have 27 quarters, you know 27 quarters is a lot more than $2.45. So that must not be a very reasonable answer. Today we cleared equations of fractions by using the least common multiple or least common denominator. And we also cleared equations of decimals by solving by a power of 10, whether it was 10 or 100. And we did that so that it would be easier for us to solve equations. And we applied this procedure when solving real life applications. If you guys have any questions, be sure to ask me next class.